In today's video, you are going to be able to use diagrams to represent ratios. Pretty much you're going to learn how to draw it out. Problems with ratios sound kind of like this. I'm making drinks for a party. The instructions on the back of the juice box say to add one cup of water for two cups of juice. I want to make enough for nine cups. How much water do I need? Honestly, to me, that's kind of confusing. And one of the strategies that I use in math is to draw it out. And I always tell my class, when in doubt, draw it out. So I'm going to show you a kind of diagram you could do using that juice and water and making it just right. I could draw a diagram like this. So the first thing that I would ask is, how many squares are there? And we could just count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine squares altogether. That means when I'm done making all those juices and all that, I'll have nine cups to drink. And then I have to ask, how many white squares are there? White squares represent the water. So there's three white squares here. So then I'd ask you then, what is the ratio of white squares to green? In other words, what's the ratio of water to juice? So I can say that there are three white squares to the green squares. There's three to six. Or I can give you a unit ratio like one to two. For every one white, there's two green. And then the diagram kind of helps me understand that a little better. So I could say, what is the total amount of cups that will be able to be served at this party? Nine. What is the ratio of juice to water? Well, juice is green, water's white. That would be six to three. But look at my next question. I could ask you the opposite. What is the ratio of water to juice? You see that flip there? That means my answer would be three to six. And then I could ask you, what is the ratio of the juice to the total? And that would be six to nine. All of those different ratios describe that diagram up there. So take a look at this. When we're talking about ratios in real life, scientists use ratios all the time. For example, Biologists can tell if a habitat is healthy based on the ratios that they observe. Biologists know that a population of animals is growing if the ratios are changing. If there's more baby animals than there are adult animals. That's sometimes a good thing, meaning the population is growing. Take a look at this picture. This would be a healthy environment if the ratios of predators to prey was correct. If the ratio of predators is too small, the population will go unchecked and that water source will run out really fast. If the ratio of predators is too high, then the other populations will be decimated. Can you imagine if there's 50 lions for every two zebras? That is not a good situation. Scientists also check the health of an area by checking the ratio of one animal to another. That often leads scientists to know about problems that are happening. If the ratio of zebras to giraffes changes, as in all the zebras start dying, but the giraffes are doing just fine, there is a serious problem happening here. Or if all the giraffes are dying off, but the zebras are doing fine. Like, that means something totally different. Conservationists would be very concerned the ratio of water to animal populations, or the ratio of the water to the land. If you have taken any kind of chemistry class, then you know how important the ratio is between the parts of an atom. The ratio between the protons and the neutrons can show how stable a chemical is, or what the chemical is. The ratio between the electrons and the protons tell a big change is happening. In a water molecule, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is usually 2 to 1. But if you just change that ratio slightly, say turn H2O into H2O2, you no longer have water, you have peroxide. If you plan to be any kind of scientist, then you need to learn everything you can about ratios. So let's head back to this diagram. Now we're talking about white and blue paint. I want us to work with these diagrams a little more so we can understand them better. This is a diagram of white paint and blue paint. The white squares are obviously larger because I'm talking about a cup of white paint and the blue is measured in tablespoons, so they're smaller. I'm trying to make a color that's like a little bit blue, but like not as dark blue as I originally bought. Have you ever done that? Have you ever like bought a color and then tried to change it? It wasn't quite right. So listen to these sentences on how I describe the ratio I'm trying to create. The ratio of white paint to blue paint is two to six. 
but that, that's not as descriptive as I want because we're talking about cups and tablespoons, so it's not quite the same. There is one cup of white paint for every three tablespoons of blue paint. Okay, that's a little more descriptive. That, that's pretty good. Listen to this one. The ratio of tablespoons to blue paint, the ratio of tablespoons of blue paint to cups of white paint is six to two. For each tablespoon of blue paint, there are two cups of white paint. If I wanted to change the diagram, I could make it be about anything. I don't have to be talking about blue paint or white paint. I could just take off the labels. And I could say, the ratio is six to two. In that case, the unit ratio is three to one. For every one white, there's three blue. That's called a unit ratio. Or I could just be vague. I could say, for each large white thing, there are three smaller blue things. In that case, the ratio would be two to six, and the root unit ratio would be one to three. When we're talking about ratios in real life, the most common place that you're going to find ratios is cooking. Most recipes call for servings of eight. But I don't know about you, but I don't eat with eight people every single night. Some romantic cookbooks are designed around cooking for two. But sometimes I kind of like those foods and I want to serve them for my whole family. And like most mothers, I got some picky eaters in my family. I can't put the ratio of mushrooms in my spaghetti sauce the way the recipe calls for it. I hate mushrooms! So I got to change that ratio up a little bit. My husband likes chunky spaghetti sauce, but my older son likes it thin and runny. So it kind of depends on what you like is how you have to change the recipe. And that's just life. You've got to make it your own. You have been given a sheet with some diagrams and some sentences on them regarding spaghetti sauce. I need you to take that sheet out, cut out all the cards individually, and sort them so that each sentence matches a diagram. Now, some sentences will match two diagrams, and some sentences will match one diagram, and some don't match anything. This is an exercise for you to start understanding how diagrams work. So that's it for this video. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to use the diagrams to represent ratios. But remember, this lesson isn't done until you've sorted those cards. When you sort the sentences, I'm going to be asking you which diagram goes with which sentence. So you could say something like, diagram A goes with sentence 4. Oh wait, I think I just gave you an answer. Okay, so my point is don't mix them all back up again until you have the answers written down. And if you happen to want to make spaghetti after this, read the comments of this video for my famous sauce. Okay, well, it's famous to the Brenners. Give that recipe a try and tell me if you like it, and then we'll continue our work with ratios after you finish matching those sentences.